The Tudor dynasty remains one of the most fascinating royal houses in European history due to its dramatic rise and fall and strong personalities like Henry VIII and Mary I. A much lesser known fact about this royal family is its controversial or even dubious claim to the English throne as descendants of an illegitimate bastard. During the lifetime of Henry VII and Henry VIII, there were dozens of individuals with more legitimate non-bastard bloodlines who could press claims to the throne. In fact, many in Europe did not expect the Tudor dynasty to last at all due to the sheer numbers of legitimate claimants to their throne, and no lack of European royals who were willing to back their claims with armies and funds. Shockingly, Henry VIII's first wife, Catherine of Aragon, arguably had a stronger claim to the English throne than the king himself through her bloodline. Although both Henry and Catherine traced their bloodlines to John of Gaunt, the founder of the Lancaster dynasty, Henry's ancestor was a bastard born to John's mistress, and Catherine's line was descended from the legitimate union between John and his wife. In this video, we will dive into the House of Tudor's complex ancestry and controversies surrounding its bloodline. The Tudor dynasty was founded by Henry VIII's father, Henry VII, who reigned as King of England from 1485 to 1509. The legitimacy of Henry VII's claim to the English throne was multi-layered and complicated because he had no straightforward blood connection to previous monarchs that he could use as the basis of his claim. In fact, his claim was more of a product of the extraordinary historical circumstances surrounding the Wars of the Roses, rather than a clear birthright. Interestingly, his father, Edmund Tudor, was the son of King Henry V's widow, Catherine of France, who remarried after the king's demise. This made Henry VII a nephew with no biological ties to Henry V, but the king's remarried widow's offspring with other men would not normally have any claim to the throne. However, since Edmund shared the same mother as King Henry VI, he stayed close to the monarchy, as Henry officially recognized him as his legitimate half-brother. Henry VII's claim to the throne was stronger on his mother's side, as his mother traced her ancestry to John of Gaunt, son of King Edward III and father of King Henry IV. One would think that such strong ties to the monarchy would lend enough credibility to her offspring's claim to the throne, but her ancestor was born from the illegitimate union between John and his mistress, Catherine Swinford. Catherine originally served John's first wife and was married to a knight named Hugh Swinford. It is unclear exactly when she became John's mistress and whether the illicit relationship began during his first or second marriage. As a mistress, she bore four children for John, one of whom would become the cornerstone of the Tudor's claim to the English throne. The illegitimate bastards between her and John would be given the surname Beaufort. The eldest son of this illicit relationship, John Beaufort, was the grandfather of Henry VII's mother, Margaret Beaufort. When John Beaufort reached his 20s, his parents were finally able to get married, as the second wife of his father, Constance of Castile, passed away in 1394. Notably, this second wife was the ancestor of Catherine of Aragon. The newly married couple's bastard children were declared legitimate by both the Pope and King Richard II. However, a decree of King Henry IV in 1406 explicitly barred the legitimated Beauforts, who were his half-siblings, and their offspring from the line of succession. Any claim that the Tudors had to the throne through the Beaufort bloodline was severely weakened by this decree, but the Wars of the Roses would change everything. The Wars of the Roses were a contest for the throne between two branches of the Royal House of Plantagenet, the House of Lancaster and the House of York. During the brutal conflicts, men of the Lancaster House kept dying, leaving Henry VII as one of the only surviving men with solid biological ties to the Lancaster royals. By 1473, his mother was actively rallying support for him to claim the throne and replace King Richard III, who belonged to the House of York. To further solidify his ties to the throne, he promised to marry Elizabeth of York, who was an heiress to the throne through the bloodline of the House of York. Henry's union with Elizabeth would combine both Lancaster and York's claim to the throne, potentially resolving the rivalry between the two houses. Now that Henry possessed convincing ties to the throne, he went to war against Richard III and slayed him at the decisive Battle of Bosworth Field on August 22, 1485, which ended the Wars of the Roses. 
This victory also allowed him to claim the crown through the right of conquest, further legitimizing his ascension to the status of a monarch. However, being descended from John of Gaunt's bastard would continue to haunt the Tudors. By the time the Tudor dynasty was established, there were 18 descendants of the Plantagenet dynasty who arguably had a stronger claim to the throne. By 1510, the number of potential claimants to the throne had increased by the birth of 16 children belonging to the House of York. With so many competitors from non-bastard bloodlines, the survival of the Tudor dynasty hinged on the brutal suppression of potential claimants. After Henry VII became king, he imprisoned the 10-year-old son of Edward IV's brother, who potentially had a better claim to the throne than him. He also had to contend with John de la Pole, a Plantagenet descendant and nephew of Richard III. Even after Henry killed John in battle, the de la Pole family would continue to lay claims to the throne well into the reign of Henry VIII, who executed Edmund de la Pole over this matter in 1513. In fact, the Tudors' fragile claim to the throne and the ever-present threat of competitions from Plantagenet and York bloodlines was a significant factor in driving Henry VIII's maniacal obsession with having male heirs, 